Happening now, the latest on the local COVID-19 outbreak. Congressman Tom Reed talks about a possible phase four of economic relief. Plus, what we know about an early morning fire here in Jamestown. And a few rain and snow showers have been moving across the area this afternoon. That'll continue, but could we see any accumulation out of it by the end of the week? I'll have the full forecast coming up as the news at noon starts now. Live and on demand, this is WNY News Now. And thanks for joining us for WNY News Now. I'm Justin Gould. Our top story, we start with developing news from the city of Jamestown, where firefighters battled a house fire at the corner of 7th Street and Rose Lane early this morning. Images from around the city show smoke visible from miles away. It also appears that the home suffered heavy damage in the blaze there. Karen Christie, she's a nature photographer who lives in the area, told us that she was awoken to heavy smoke in her neighborhood this morning. I got up and I saw smoke coming, you know, I went to the bathroom, was out my bathroom window. I saw smoke coming up and at first I thought it was a cloud and then I'm like, no, it's rising from you know, the earth up, and I thought there must be a fire. So I have a camera. I belong to the Audubon Photo Club, and I thought, well, I'll go take pictures, because usually the newspaper wants photos. So I came over and, you know, took pictures. One thing that got me is they climbed up. You know, first they had, I don't know what you call the thing that stretches up, and then they had the men go up there and go on the roof, and I thought that was pretty dangerous. So I thought I'll take pictures so people can see what firemen have to do. And that sounded like they were, and it looked like they were sawing through the roof, which I thought was pretty dangerous. <laughs> Aunt Christie says she's very grateful for the first responders who quickly rushed to the scene there to help extinguish the flames. When we learn more about what caused the fire if it, and if anyone was hurt, we'll update our story at WNYNewsNow.com and on our mobile app. Well, no new cases of COVID-19 were reported in both Chautauqua and Cattaraugus counties yesterday. Officials say thanks to in part by our social distancing efforts. Cattaraugus County now has a total of 26 active cases, 26 cases total, 21 of them are active with five people who have recovered. Currently, there are 24 confirmed cases of the virus here in Chautauqua County, with three active cases and 11 patients fully recovered. Three people have died from complications to the virus here in Chautauqua County. Executive PJ Wendell has now launched a new online campaign to help spread awareness for wearing masks when in public. And you can participate by taking a photo of yourself in the mask you wear in public, holding a sign who you wear a mask to protect. The post then posted to your social media site using hashtag I wear my mask to spread awareness and encourage others to wear a mask in public. As you see, I started today by posting a photo of myself and you can see this at the top of my page. I wear my mask to protect my family and the residents of Chautauqua County. You can find the image to print in the comments of hashtag I wear my mask photo. And we'd love to see your photo if you want to add it to the comments. This mask was provided by Mr. Ken Lawton and his family. I've spent 30 years in the volunteer fire service and 26 as an EMT, so he felt it fitting that my mask would have flames on it. I ask everyone to continue their vigilance in keeping us strong in Chautauqua County. Remember, stay home, stay healthy, stay safe and we will be CHQ strong. And yesterday, Executive Wendell extended the county's state of emergency for up to 30 additional days due to the continuing COVID pandemic. Well, this week, many in our community are expected to electronically receive their ec economic stimulus checks. Meanwhile, several U.S. congressional members nationwide have voiced their support for a phase four of the package citing the need to build on the three phases that have already passed in the wake of the pandemic outbreak. Congressman Tom Reed tells us that negotiations are ongoing now. He adds that he's doing everything he can to ensure that talks don't occur overnight. 
Those negotiations are occurring. They are being uh, hammered out as we speak. We are glad to be part of the effort to stop any middle of night negotiations that we're moving forward on Easter Sunday and Monday. And uh, where we're heading, I think, is a overall negotiation that's going to involve the extension of the PPP program, a paycheck protection program, but much, much broader uh, than that. We got notice yesterday. You know, I'm, I'm in Corning. I'm not in D.C., just so everyone's on the same page here. Raid says that May 4th is the earliest a vote could occur because Congress won't be called back to D.C. to vote before that, bearing any emergency, of course. Well, it's a big question. When will social distancing come to an end and society will return to normal? Well, a new study now suggests that social distancing may last longer than we think. John Lawrence explains more. Social distancing may not be distant anytime soon. If the virus is around in a few people and we aren't uh, imposing control measures, it will resurge. Researchers at the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health say COVID-19 still poses a serious threat and measures like stay-at-home orders and school closures may be needed intermittently until at least 2022. If we could get a vaccine, that would be a total game changer. Um, that's a long way off. That's probably almost certainly a year off. Meanwhile, the White House looks toward restarting the economy. The plans to reopen the country are close to being finalized. Federal social distancing guidelines are scheduled to expire on May 1st. But Dr. Anthony Fauci, the top infectious disease expert in the nation, calls reopening the country then overly optimistic. And some governors from both parties say they're being cautious. Let's not make the mistake of pulling the plug too early as much as we all want to. Which means at least some form of social distancing will likely be the new normal for a while longer. It's pretty unlikely that there are gonna be sports with spectators in the, in the stands this fall and winter. Um, you know, I, I really hope to be wrong. I'm John Lawrence reporting. John, thank you. Dr. Robert Redfield, he's the director for the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, called social distancing one of the most powerful weapons the nation has to attack coronavirus. Well, new legislation was introduced here in New York to thank first responders for their work on the front lines of the coronavirus pandemic. The proposed bill, which comes one day before the traditional deadline for filing taxes, would create a tax deduction of up to $5,000 for medical professionals, certified first responders, and EMT for personal protective equipment and travel expenses related to the pandemic. Now, once passed, the bill would apply to their 2020 tax year. While social distancing is keeping many physically apart, it's not stopping a local band from playing together. The Fredonia High School Symphonic Band put together a virtual fight song of sorts. In total, 58 members of the band are seen playing together in the video posted by Fredonia Central School District teacher Andy Bennett. Take a look. Wow, that's absolutely amazing. Kudos to those kids and uh, their band director, too, for stitching it together. I've already watched the video. This is my favorite part right here. See the girl in the lower left-hand corner waving? Hello to you, and hopefully you are having a good day. As we continue to put facts over fear in the coverage of the novel coronavirus COVID-19 outbreak. And we thank you for joining us from your home or wherever you are. If you're first responder on the front lines. We thank you for that. Got to say hello to Jesse. Hello to Katie. Hello to Kate. Lori, good afternoon to you. Roz, good to see you. Jeremy, Patricia, Michael, thank you all for joining us today. Jessica, Lynette, and David, hello to all of you. And really, this COVID-19 outbreak has put a lot of stress on a lot of people. So I just want to say, if you can, take a moment to yourself every day 
and try to remember some of the lighter things in life and take a pause as well to know that we will get through this together. And usually news agencies try to separate themselves, especially from government officials, since we try to hold them, uh, those in power accountable, as we like to always say. But Chautauqua County Executive P.J. Wendell's message of CHQ Strong is just that. We will be CHQ Strong as we move forward through this process. Let's now get a check of our weather forecast. And hopefully you got some good news for us today, Dakota, um, in regards to the weather. I think we may be could put together a band. What do you think? Well, the problem with that is I have no musical ability whatsoever. My singing well, sounds like a cat being mauled by two dogs, and I can't play any instrument at all. You could do the drums or something. I think that'd be kind of I cool. can't. I can't no? keep a beat. Oh. But I'm a master at air guitar. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I... <laughs> with first defense doppler we've had a few light rain and snow showers moving across the southern tier this afternoon that will continue and especially looking down the road throughout this week there's likely going to be a little bit more snow on the way i'm sorry uh it was a little bit breezy yesterday 29 uh was the peak wind gust in dunkirk 24 um you know at the that, actually that should be dunkirk at 29 jamestown at 24 and uh, so the wind speeds were not as great as they were on monday but it still was a little bit breezy right now temperatures around the region way below average 30 34 here in town, 35 Mayville, 38 Fredonia. Uh, that uh, climber reading is incorrect. Uh, 36 in Quarry and 37 in Waterford in Erie County, Pennsylvania. So temperatures are way below average for this time of the year. And the high yesterday was also below average, 39 degrees. And the records for today, 77 and 14 are in the record books for today. So as we take you through the remainder of the afternoon, mostly cloudy, rain and snow showers will continue at times. Not as breezy as it has been. Quite cold, 37 to 44 is our high temp range with a west wind, 5 to 10. The the wind picks up later in the afternoon to 10 to 15 miles per hour. And yeah, there's going to be a little bit of accumulating snow as we head into the week's end. We'll talk about it in just a few. Justin. All right, Dakota, looking forward to it. Thank you, sir. Coming up next, we want to talk to you about what you think about this COVID-19 pandemic. How are you doing? How are things going? How are you adapting? One of our friends of the show, Joanna Dahlbeck, joins us live to tell her experience. We'll be right back. With coverage that matters, this is WNY News Now. EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvanna Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer, plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. This is Christine Schuyler, Chautauqua County Public Health Director with a very important message. We need you to make every effort to protect yourselves and our healthcare workers. If you absolutely don't need to go out, don't. If you have a mild cold or flu-like symptoms with or without a fever, stay home. If your symptoms are severe, call your healthcare provider. Do not go to the emergency room or urgent care. Do not call 911 or go to the ER unless you are experiencing a life-threatening emergency. The best ways you can help prevent the spread of COVID-19 are to wash your hands often with soap and water, cover your cough, avoid close contact with others. Please stay home. You're watching WNY News Now, your source for breaking news. And welcome back to WNY News Now. One of our close friends of the show, Joanna Dahlbeck joins us here live to talk more about this COVID-19 outbreak. And Joanna, it's great to have you on the show today. I'm so happy to see you, my friend. Yeah, even though we're, we're social distancing to the best we can, yeah. Um, yeah. which I think a lot of people are doing. And, you know, it seems to be really hard. I think uh, one of the big things is my grandparents actually just got back. Um, from Florida. They're snowbirds. And it's been really tough not to go say hello to them. Normally we go yeah. down and visit them, but we, we haven't. They decided to come back early because of all of this. And I mean, you see these pictures. Yesterday we had uh, the CEO of Heritage on, and you see yes, these amazing not. pics on social media of families visiting uh, residents at those homes through windows 
and calling them and it's it's so tough what has this whole covid change been like for you well as you we spoke of earlier the last time i was with you was a few days before i left for florida in march and um we did get to florida fine everything seemed just fine uh we went to eat on the 12th of march in sebring florida and the 13th of march in sarasota florida and then we did our public shopping and went to a house and rented it for a week and we were supposed to be there a little longer but as we all know everything broke loose they closed the beaches but you know what was interesting new york was farther ahead than florida in getting stuff shut down and that's actually why we decided we we really needed to get home. So uh, if we couldn't change our flights, we were going to rent rent the car and drive it home. But then they were saying about closing borders and yeah. all kinds of stuff. Thankfully, we did get on an airplane on the 21st of March, nonstop out of Tampa. But we ended up making an unexpected stop in Cleveland because the New York City air traffic control wouldn't let us in. Yeah. And actually, when we we're sitting on the airplane, you could feel it turning west. And my husband says, Joanna, I think we're going back. And I'm like, no. <laughs> no. Right. I mean, it's like so that fear of where you'd almost feel like you're kind of stuck. I know. Uh, a we few, felt hostage, yeah. Yeah. A few weeks ago, <laughs> there were people uh, who, who called us and reached out to us on social media in such panic where they're like, we see online now that they're going to be closing down the border between New York right. and Pennsylvania. And I'm like, well, this is the first we've heard of it. And, and we reached out to state right. police. It wasn't the case, but it's it's so tough. Um, you, you spend a lot of time in the community and, and talking uh, with folks, uh, part of your job with, with the Chamber of Commerce, which is one of the big ways we, we were so nice to meet you. Uh, and, and a pleasure to, 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 to have you come visit us here. But, I didn't have time to put on my chamber shirt today. That's okay. Everybody's working from <laughs> home. It's like... Dakota and I are probably the last two people in Jamestown who, who still come to come here and we're the only people here. It's crazy. <laughs> but but it's like the, the thing is this this information, social media, it's so amazing. But at the same time, it's almost scary in a way because you see something on your there and it's like, how do you fact check it? Well, you you have that problem, but you know what else I'm figuring out? I this is, you know, a huge shift for everybody. And one of the things I'm realizing is we've all come back to our center a little bit and are realizing what's important. And um, that makes me feel really good. Um, I'm hearing from friends that I haven't heard from in ages, and I'm reaching out to people that I haven't talked to in a long time, just, you know, checking in on people. And the same with our members checking in with them too and boy you know people are really appreciating each other more and i think yeah I said you know the universe said you guys are out of control i'm going to send you all to your room right i mean really and that's where we are I, i've talked yep. to more people on the phone than i than i ever have in a long time it seems like where we might be social distancing but we're not social isolating ourselves right it's beautiful right, right. yeah it really is a uh, couple things, if I may, on uh, chamber business. Uh, please visit our website, chq by b u y local, chq by local dot com. Uh, there's lists of restaurants, and it's updated as frequently as possible. Um, I mean, really, literally hourly, if it's necessary. Essential businesses and delivery only businesses are on there, as well as a lot of videos with um, that we've had with attorneys and with um, the county executive and uh, tourism agencies, so on and so forth. It's just a lot of material there if you are bored and want to look at it. Uh, one other thing that we're doing for the community is uh, holding a legislative breakfast with Senator Tom Re no, S Senator Bar Barello and Andy Goodell. And that's going to be at 8.30 in the morning on Friday, the 24th of April. And you have to register for that. It's going to be a go-to meeting. Uh, register for it at chautauquachamber.org under the events selection, uh, events tab. 
and it's free. However, if you feel you're able to, we would we would welcome a donation. Um, obviously, we're in a not-for-profit situation as well, along with a lot of other businesses. But we're you know we're also a community service, and we want to continue to supply that service. So. And really, the chamber. I know we had Todd on on Friday. The chamber has been doing such a great job of connecting mm-hmm. not just businesses but community members to. to Yes. Information yes. Too. Because we cover the whole community. We, we right. you know, we're communicating with Ripley and Cherry Creek and Silver Creek and Climber, not just those areas that you think of as Jamestown, Fredonia, Dunkirk, Westfield, Mayville. We're all over and we're trying and, to help each individual community. And a really important point is that CHQ <laughs> local website where people can see what businesses are still open to shop right, right now. And for a lot of these small mom and pop shops that we think, and it's even not just them, I mean, larger businesses yeah. who have been around for hundreds of years here, right. the COVID right. restrictions, albeit they're for good, good measure, are very detrimental where a lot of people are, if they don't, if as a small business, if you don't have cash flow, your neighbors might be out of a You're job. Done. Right. Um, and I want to also stress, we, there's no differential at this point while we, you know, certainly are, are taking as well care of our, our current members of the chamber who have supported us for many years. You do not have to be a member to be included on any of our programs or on our website at this time. Um, we just are feeling a, a definite need to reach out to each individual business. And if anyone knows of a business or has a business that you have a question for or anything, please contact me through the website or uh, give it a call to the office. <clears throat> and um, um, my extension, I, I think my extension is 211. I never had one before. <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. I mean, really, with the with everybody uh, working remotely now, I mean, it's so yeah. it's so important. I know we were just kind of joking to give a little behind the scenes look here. Um, you're actually in your garage <laughs> because yes, your husband sir, has am. laid claim to the office. Yes, my husband claimed the spare bedroom where the office is. Um, he's retired, but he he still stays active on some of his other projects. And we have a little dog who is a, a barker and. Um, yeah, I've got my kerosene heater, and um, I've got a refrigerator, and I got I do have a potted plant here. I can't even steer. Well, it's there somewhere. <laughs> yes, oh, I, I kind of see it down there. I have a potted plant in my office. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, you gotta you gotta have that that the the light there somewhere for sure. And I have um, a rolling desk, so you know I can close everything down and push it away, and be done. Perfect. I, I want to take a look at some of the comments and kind of see what people are saying about this. Uh, we thank you all for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Uh, Dave says, I think that the homeschooling is schooling me more than some of the little ones that are out there. Oh, that's and, cool. Yeah, hey, that, that must else? have been it. I think I'm learning Spanish and sign language, uh, you know, like I'm by osmosis. Yeah. <laughs> So it's a, it's really cool. And uh, the Jester's Promoting Company says something here, which I think is important. Tell me something that made you smile yesterday. And, and to that conversation where we almost now, society is a little simpler than it was just a month ago, um, where, yeah, we have all these, these regulations and you've got to stay home. But the, the thing <laughs> is, we're almost being, I think, better neighbors and better yeah. friends. I have two two things that, that have come up. Um, one is, you know, because now we're, we're going to be wearing the masks when we go out, which I have mine. We're going to have to learn how to smile with our eyes. Yeah. So a way to do that is to put a pencil in your mouth. Mm-hmm. And it's really hard not to make the corners of your lips go up, and which makes your eyes go up. So, you know, I'm not saying walk around with it in your mouth with the mask, but, you know, put your mask on, put a pencil in there, and then look at your eyes. Okay, well, hang on. I I actually <laughs> have my mask. I do. It's at my desk. I'm just going to walk over here and grab it. So I just okay. take a pencil, 
and I have a pencil here. Well, it's a pen, but it's got the cap on it. Okay. okay. <laughs> Can we cut back to me? Thank you. So, um, which one do you think I should do? I don't care. The blue, maybe? <laughs> that matches All more? Right. I uh, wore yeah, this this definitely. morning. Oh, so. yes. Heaven forbid you don't okay. match. This so, point. this is, this is, this is, I don't know how clean this is, actually. <laughs> the truth be told. <laughs> Are that good? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put this on here. Now, look at your eyes. He's smiling. Yeah. It's just yeah. our style. It works. It does. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> Joanna, thank you so much for joining us today. You're we welcome. love having you. Uh, I'm here whenever. I'm not going anywhere. No, I none of us are. The haircut, though, please. God, you know that's so see. hard. Um, I'm starting to get my hair is starting to get crazy. I've given up. I've I, I, I've tried Damn. my best. We uh, normally I I have a little help every day, but they're not essential <laughs> workers anymore. So, <laughs> it's okay. Okay. Joanna, thank you so much for joining us Bye. today. Uh, take Good care, day, my friend. everyone. Be safe. <laughs> Let's now get a check of our weather forecast. And uh, Dakota, I like your mask, buddy. Um, what are you doing? Is that a garbage can? See, I look better with a garbage can over my face, no. don't I? You can have one of mine. I'll wash them and I'll give it to you tomorrow. <laughs> That's going in the blooper reel. Anyway, here's a live look from Salamanca. You can see some of the snow that is falling and I smudged the heck out of my glasses so now I can't see. But uh, that's a live look coming from Salamanca. The snow and uh, is falling down there uh, with some of the uh, light rain showers there. Look at that air temperature of 35 degrees. Yikes. So now in terms of social distancing, if you want to get out in the backyard and do something, well, it's not looking great for that though. Again, temperatures in the 30s, rain and snow showers at times and the winds will still be up, especially early. And then also with that, uh, again, with the winds, uh, they will start to die down a little bit as we go into the later part of the uh, afternoon here. Uh, the uh, radar shows you there's some of that light rain showers, that rain and snow shower that's been moving through Salamanca, going through Olean, uh, basically I-86 eastward going into Allegheny County. And this will continue through the afternoon here. High pressure has uh, kind of scooted on out, which has kind of allowed some of those rain and snow showers to come in. But there's another system peaking right back there. And that is going to be our next weather maker heading into tomorrow and Friday. So let's talk about it here. There's going to be a fast moving low moving to our south. And because we're going to be on the northern end of this, because again, low pressure spins um, uh, low pressure spins counterclockwise. So we are going to be uh, in the uh, flow around that low. So again, the northern end of that low pressure is going to be the colder end. So we're likely going to see some periods of wet accumulating snow Thursday night and Friday. We'll show it to you on future scan. Nothing through the day. Well, just a few rain and snow showers through the day. Here it is here going into tonight. You can see a few of those rain and snow showers coming our way. Any snow accumulation tonight should be minor, an inch on the highest hills, less than an inch across, um, you know, the lower elevations. A few rain and snow showers tomorrow will take us through the day tomorrow. And then as we head into Thursday night, the low pressure area moves a little bit closer uh, to our region. So that'll influx the moisture. So rain and snow showers Thursday night, changing over to a period of all snow likely by Friday morning. And then all this will likely start to taper off later Friday afternoon going into Friday night and Saturday should be a good day. So here are our early projections so far based on what we have. There's still a little disagreement with the two prime global computer models we use, but this is what we're going with right now. But understand Again, this could change tomorrow based on new data. We're going about an inch or less across the lower elevations. Once you go into the hills, about one to two inches, a little bit more snow further to the south as you get closer to that storm center. But I think most everybody will be between an inch to two inches. There could be an isolated three inch on the highest hills. I wouldn't rule that out, but I think the chance of that three inches is going to be very uh, is going to be very localized, especially on the highest hills. So temperatures today in the inland areas, yeah, still below average. We may squeak out 40. I think that's that's being a bit optimistic here. We might stay in the upper 30s all day for most areas with a few rain and snow showers. Take a look at the next seven days of your life that are coming up now, 35 tomorrow, and uh, rain and snow showers, especially in the morning hours there. An inch or two on Friday of snow, up around 40. Saturday, a nice day with partial sunshine. A few rain showers Sunday, back into the mid 50s. Then here we go again, another trough comes in next week. Brings us a chance for a few rain and snow showers on Monday, but a dry day on Tuesday. That'll do it uh, for us here on uh, News Now at Noon. News continues 24 
24-7 at WNY News Now and also on the uh, app. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a good day.